I'm going to teach you something very important about topology and Blender. A lot of people make this mistake, which is good for you because you're about to learn something that nobody else knows. So you're going to be ahead of the pack. Okay. I've received this model right here from one of my patrons. He needed some help with modeling something on this car. He didn't know how to do it. And while inspecting this model, I figured out there's something wrong with certain parts of this object. And chances are you're doing the same shit. Okay. So pay attention. In the back of this vehicle right here, there's this cut out shape where you're supposed to put the backlight. I guess you're supposed to put the license plate down here, whatever. There's this hole in the back of this object. And when you zoom in on this hole, you're going to notice that there's this jagged shading over here on this part. You can see that it's, it looks pretty smooth down here and up here, but on some parts, there's like a little edge or a little sharp point sticking inwards. It looks stupid, all right? You can't have this on a model. You can't put this in your final render. You can't show this to your employer or your client. It doesn't look good, right? And let me explain to you why this is happening because you have to understand this. This is very important. It's a simple topology issue and it's a very simple concept that you need to understand. And the reason that you people probably make this mistake most of the time is because nobody talks about this. If you go watch any other Blender YouTube channel, they make flash animations. They talk about shit that everybody already knows. They talk about what's in the new Blender update. That's not going to get you good at Blender. This is the type of shit that's going to make you good at Blender, okay? If you know this, you're going to become good. And I know this because I watched Thomas Cole in 3D, all right? So if you want to see more videos which talk, uh, teach you things that you need to know and which talk about things which aren't just nonsense to catch your ADHD attention, right? You got to go watch Thomas Cole and you're going to watch more videos like this. So subscribe to the fucking channel if you haven't already, okay? The reason this is happening is because some vertices on this hole have multiple edges attached to them. All right. If you look at what's happening down here, all of these vertices are pretty clean. Well, we got to merge this because we got some trouble going on over here, but all of these vertices are pretty clean. All right. As you can see, everything looks nice and smooth down here. There's no problems. There's nothing jagged going on. But then all of a sudden we get to the first part where we got a little bit of shading issues. And there's two more points up here. Now you're going to notice that on all the points where you have this shading problem, there is a vertex which has two edges attached to it. And I'm talking about the edges which are on the surface. I'm not talking about the bordering edges. Okay. So except these edges, this vertex where you got the problem has two more edges attached to it. This one here does not have any shading problems because there is only one edge attached to it. If we had another edge over here, for example, if we join these two vertices with J, let me give you my screencast keys just so you see what I'm doing. Okay. Over here, I selected these two vertices and I joined them with J. All of a sudden we got two edges attached to this vertex and that's when you get this problem. All right. So you have to make sure that all your edges or all your vertices have only one edge attached to them when it comes to the edges, which are on the surface and not on the border. All right. This is why we're having these problems over here. So you have to figure out a way to merge this. Now, it doesn't really make sense for me to sit here and show you how I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix this off camera, but that's not the point. You shouldn't even have this problem in the first place. So I'm going to show you the correct way to do this. So you don't get this problem in the first place. All right. We're not going to sit here and correct this. I'm going to correct this for my patron. And if you want me to correct your model, then you're going to have you go subscribe to my patron. You can send me a model and I'm going to help you. All right. This is what I do. But right now I'm going to show you how to prevent this shit from happening in the first place. So here's the right way to cut holes and to carve shapes out of surfaces in Blender without getting these types of problems. We're going to make a simple surface over here on the side. Let's give it a simple plane. I'm going to subdivide this a couple of times. I'm using subdivide. Uh, I'm using the subdivide function from the W menu. For some reason, this is not the case anymore. You can't do this in the new versions of the Blender. I don't know why they change this shit all the time, but you can subdivide by selecting your mesh and going up here to edge. And there's going to be a subdivide button right here. Click that. Let's increase the number of cuts to something like six, seven, eight, whatever. And now here's what happens. Here's what this gentleman right here did. Here's what caused his problem. Okay. Let's also duplicate this. so I can show you later the right way to do this. The reason this happened is because he took a surface like this out of this plane and he just cut it out. He deleted the faces and then he added some thickness here. He extruded this down and then he subdivided this. And as a result, Let's try to make a more natural shape. Let's take all this and I'm going to use my loop tools to relax this. If you don't got your loop tools active, you got to make sure you got them active because you're going to need this shit all the time. If you're trying to make good 3D models, if you're watching my videos, then you already have this, right? If you're watching all these other Blender YouTubers, they're not going to tell you about the useful shit. They're going to tell you about the shit that's going to get you to click on the video, right? I don't care about that. I'm trying to teach you the useful shit. So go up here to edit, preferences, add-ons, type in loop tools, 
and check this box right here. All of a sudden, you got a new set of tools which you can use to clean up your geometry. And you can press M, and over here on the side, you're gonna have an edit menu. So when you select a, a sharp edge loop like this one, you can open up loop tools, click on relax. And all of a sudden, this becomes nice and smooth, right? By default, it's gonna be something like this. It's gonna be cubic and one iteration. I set mine to linear, and you set the number of iterations to five, and go googly moogly before you know it, you got a nice smooth curve over here, okay? You don't have to spend no time using add-ons. Probably someone's gonna try to sell you an add-on for this shit, which you have to pay for, and guess what? They got an affiliate deal. Anyway, since you got this going on right here, and once again, you got a situation where some of your vertices have two edges attached to them. When you add your subdivision surface modifier, because of how the subdivision surface modifier works, this face here gets subdivided into four, and also this vertex has to move downwards because of the subdivision surface modifier. So you get this twisting on this face right here, which makes it look jagged, which makes it look like shit, all right? You don't want to have this. This is not right, the right way to do it. The right way to do it is this. We have to make sure, once again, that each of these vertices has only one edge attached to it, not two edges. Now you can fix this by taking this edge loop over here and beveling it with control B. You scroll up once to make sure you got two segments, you set the shape value to one. Now every vertex has only one edge attached to it, okay? So now this is going to be a little bit better, especially if you've got a tighter curve, maybe you want to add another one, whatever, right? But the right way to prevent this from happening from in the first place is this. We're going to take a shape, we're going to select a surface, and this, this is what we want the shape of the hole to be, okay? This is, we're now defining the shape of the cut that we're trying to create. Let's select some geometry like this, let's make a little L shape, okay? You're first going to press... I to inset. Let me just get my default settings back. Give me a, give me a second, man. We're first going to press I to inset this, and this is what happens when you press I, okay? And this, as you can see, creates a set of faces around this selected area, and every vertex around your surface, on the border of your surface, has only one edge attached to the outside of it. Now, we need to cut this shit out like somebody took a bite out of it, all right? So we don't want to have this face loop here. We're going to uncheck boundary because when you uncheck boundary, this face segment right here is going to be removed because there's no more geometry over here. So Blender's not going to create nothing new here. And on top of that, the better way to do this is this because now we inset this and we're moving it. We're making this hole smaller. We don't want to make this hole smaller. I want it to be this big. So instead of insetting this, I'm going to press O for outset. All right, so now around this selected area, we're just going to get a nice set of edges. And you can do that after you've already inset this if you want to by checking this box right here called outset. Now you got a beautiful set of faces right here. So now if you delete these faces, and now if you take this edge loop extrude, right click, lower it down to the Z axis. Let's add another one over here just to keep things consistent. Now when you subdivide this, Nothing is jagged, nothing is crooked, nothing is busted. You have no problem, okay? Now your geometry is clean. This is what your employer wants to see if they're gonna hire you into their 3D studio, okay? Your client probably doesn't care because they usually just want an animation or something. It depends on what industry you're in, right? But if you're gonna hire a studio or something, you're doing something serious, you're working for a studio or, or whatever the fuck the studio has got going on. You can ask Thomas Colin about that. He works at studios. Look at me, I obviously can't work at a studio. I'm unemployable. I gotta figure out other ways to make money, right? And which I do very well, by the way. So if you want to do something similar, then you better follow me on Instagram because I teach you guys how to do this shit. This is why I can sit here and cuss and be shirtless because I can do whatever the fuck I want, right? But if you're working at a studio and if you wanna if you wanna participate in a in a workflow or what do you call it, a pipeline, which is more conventional, more professional. I don't know why they put so much emphasis on this. I'm, I'm about results, but studios are more about the process. I don't know why. Then you don't want to show up with nothing like these jagged edges, all right? You don't want to pull up the studio and you don't want to show them this because as soon as they see this, they're going to just, they're not even going to look at your CV anymore. They're just going to be like, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. But since you watched Aryan's tutorial and since you subscribed to Thomas Cole in 3D and you watched a couple of his tutorial, you're not going to have those problems, okay? Your geometry is going to look nice and clean like this, all right? So you better subscribe to the channel because otherwise you're going to have trouble. You're going to have some problems. It's not a matter of choice, okay? This is not what you want to see. You probably want to look at flash animations on other, on other uh, YouTube channels. Right here, I'm telling you what you gotta know. So it's not a matter of choice. You're gonna subscribe to the fucking channel and you're gonna like the video too. And you're also gonna join our Discord community because we got, I think we crossed 4,000 people in there. Everybody's talking about 3D modeling. It's the only way you can get good. If you're involved with other people who are doing the same shit because you're gonna pick up some tricks every now and again, all right? If you want to learn more professional 
tools and techniques and things about modeling in Blender. I put basically everything that I ever use for modeling in Blender into my ebook. So check that out. The link is below. All right. And if you need some more personalized help for your problems, for whatever you're working on, whatever projects you're dealing with, all right, check out my Patreon page. You can get in touch with me and I'm going to help you out. I can make a video like this about your specific topic and we can talk about it a little bit more. All right. Like the damn video. Let me know what you want to see next and I'll see you in the next one.